Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. I am going to embark upon the final Winter is Coming Wednesday. I'm going to have it be actually in reverse order. I have a compilation of all of my last remaining cards that I put together with snippets of tutorials and demos. So that's going to be on Wednesday. This one people have been asking about because it is the part two of Paper Pumpkin. So it's a combination of Paper Pumpkin and Winter is Coming Wednesday and I'm going to release this just as soon as I get it finished uh, because I promised this when I did the From the North Pole uh, November Paper Pumpkin kit. So you'll see that these two kits are right here and I wanted to share my space with you. Here's where I video. Here is where I work. I've got all my inks. I've got all of my supplies. I've got pens, embossing folders, all of my Christmas stamp sets, and then right here is my big box of completed cards. The green are the last remaining. I decided I needed to stop. I've got maybe six left, but all of the materials are cut for them. They just need a final assembly and maybe some additional doodads. This is my ribbon bag that Libby sent me a couple of years ago now, maybe. And so then I have over here is where I do my embossing in my die cutting with my cuddle bug and then if I need anything I've got my computer up here which right now is doing nothing because I've been busy away and those are all my plates so uh, without further ado I am going to now go away oh here's my view that I get to look at all day long people going up along the trail waving to me it's very fun so I'm gonna close out the video for a second get myself situated get my two boxes of paper pumpkin out and start combining pieces and making up some cards. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do this. Um, I will probably come and go with different bits and pieces and then at the end we'll see if I get them finished and I can do some finished shots. So it's possible I'm not going to do mix and match. I am going to just make my cards and I have about 10 to 15. I did find more non-paper pumpkin card uh, pieces partially assembled. I knew I had them, I just couldn't find them, and I have found them. So I don't have to make as many as I thought I was going to have to make. I think I have 42 cards made, plus maybe 6 over here, so 46 made, and I need around 56. So I need a minimum of 10. So I will be back momentarily to get going on the this wonderful final episode of uh, combining Winter is Coming Wednesday and the last two paper pumpkin kits. All right, so what I've done is I've got each box open and I have them each on a part. One is over here on my embossing die cutting area and the other is sitting right here where I usually do my stamping. So I am going to pull out all of the pieces now and start doing some intermingling of these various kits and one is of course the the tags and so here are the tags as they were prescribed of course I did not do them I did A2 size cards I'm now over trying to find the instructions for the October kit and you can see here if I get this back a little bit for you that we have some styles that cross over between the two of them we have cherry cobbler crumb cake evening evergreen and um, in this case we've got some pool party. Oh, here comes somebody. Oh, it's the mowers. Okay, so I'm going to pause for a moment and let the mowers finish their mowing and then we'll come right back. This will give me a chance to get more organized. All right, I had to stop. I have created, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, 14 different designs of which I think 11 of them are fully finished. And then I do have one fun thing to share with you, 
and that is fairy string lights. We did one of these in the um, in October at the quarterly North Carolina meeting, and these fairy lights. I will tell you, I bought a um, hundred of them, but they did not come with the flat round disc battery. They were too fat. So you do want to make sure you get the skinny round type battery. And I will have, this is a 24 pack. Each comes with 20 LEDs and you slip out. There's a protector. You have to peel it out, which I've already done. And then here's what they look like all lit. And it's very easy to make. The one that we did happens to be the Aspen tree. And so I already have vellum. And then I have a back piece, which actually is a piece from this set, one of the cards from the October Ho 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 set. I'm going to go ahead and use as the back. And all you have to do is choose. I have a bird floating around here. And the bird will cover the battery. The bird goes with the set. I'm digging through my pile now to find that bird. Here's the bird. I haven't colored it yet. So this bird is big enough to cover the battery. So all you have to do is use some scotch tape. Any old scotch tape will do. And get a bunch of pieces, little pieces. I have to find the one. This this particular set might have more LED lights. It, they, it's pretty long. It has 20 of them. So you first you want to tack this down with some tear and tape so that it is going to make sure it's safe snuggled up out as out of the way as possible. And then the bird is going to go over the top. See, it will hide the battery assembly. So we get that attached. I can even have it a little bit lower. And then I just thought this would be a fun bonus. I will have the item. It is, I'm an affiliate. In fact, I'm an influencer now, so I will, if you do buy these particular lights from, from my link, I will get a small commission. It will not make you pay any more. And any amount I receive is much appreciated because it helps me afford to buy more, more fun supplies just like this. So I'm going to turn it off now. I've got it down at the bottom. We're going to have the bird. In fact, I might have put it too low, so I'm going to carefully peel it up. I want it up a little higher so that it's hidden by the bird. So let's try this. Yep, I think that will work perfect. Okay, and I will color the bird. So now you get to wrap this in any pattern you want. You can make it flat. You can fill it up. I'm going to do it pretty fast. And again, I think that this one has more LEDs than the ones that we did in the class. This has got lots. Oh, and Hub has arrived, but I am busy. So I'm going to pause for a quick sec and close my door so I can finish this. All right, I'm back. Hub is settled. He just went to the grocery store. So you'll want the lights to be more centrally located. I believe, I haven't done this myself, but I believe you can cut some of the pieces off if you want. We are going to pop up the top piece with dimensionals and I have not tested how long these these last 
I am not sure. And I do know you can get the batteries and replace them. All right, so I'm gonna try this. So this one that's sticking up here is an, an example of one that you want to make sure it's taped down. Okay, we have the bird on. And oh, now I'm there we go. And there you have it. So what I plan on doing is finishing this up and I will put a paper, it'll sit up like a, like a 3D item. So I'll have some extensions that you unfold and it will stand up and I will do a sentiment on the back here. So just a fun idea for you guys to consider and it, this is sort of unrelated, but it does use the the piece. This is a um, a back piece from one of the cards that we got in the October kit. So I'm not sure. I'm going to now move on. If you guys have any questions or comments about these fairy lights, let me know. I will answer. You can put them on the blog or on the video. So now let's move on to the kit. Now I'm not going to remember which piece comes with which, so I'm not going to be able to decipher for you because I put everything in a pile. I sorted them by like items. So I have the white snowflakes and the green snowflakes were pretty much together. Most of the green snowflakes are used, but they were kind of together. So I know in looking at the kit pieces, that I tried to use all of the bases that I had. I had cut them into pieces. I also had cut some envelopes, so I tried to use those. I definitely used the snowflakes. I tried really hard to do some of the brown, the, the crumb cake style, but boy, it does not seem Christmassy to me. So I didn't use as many of them as we were provided. Uh, and I do have a few pieces left and some envelopes and I will use those envelopes. So moving on to, so here's the completed projects that we had and I didn't make anything like any of these. So then we have tags, lots of tags. I see the ho, ho, ho. I'd like, that's cute that you can do the red outline. I have not done that and I have one that I want to use. I have a layout for you. I haven't finished it yet. I will definitely be doing the red. See, this is why I never look at these. Um, and I hardly used the green banner material. I used the green snowflakes, but not the banner material. So none of these were made into tags. They're all put on cards. So for instance, let's now look at this one. Like I said, I probably won't do be able to keep straight what came from what, but I wasn't really concerned with making sure my cards had a mix of both. I just went with whatever I thought looked good. So this particular card does use the large tag that goes behind the glitter. And from there, I used my Let It Snow from Joyful Flurry, which I used Let It Snow quite a bit. The green, I did the green, I did the adhesive backed seasonal sequins. These have a, a iridescent coating on them that I love. And then of course this also is from the tags. And then I did apply the top. There is this tanner, tan, banner topper right here that I did apply and I ran it through the embossing folder, uh, the wintry 3D. I also went through and did white bricks. This is the white. You'll notice all these white whites match because this is a card base piece. Then as a final touch, I got these new festive 
pearls. I even ordered yet another set that so they're going to be retiring at the end of the month. So they are actually these are a very soft green and I added those uh, grouping with the sequins and then the snowflakes. On the back you will see that I was very good and I remembered to cut out a bit of the shaded spruce because this is actually a piece of cardstock that I lined it with. Some of them are made into cards and this was one of my last ones that I did so I was getting close to done and I thought I will finish these later. Okay so that is one. Now here's one that I went with black gray and the cherry cobbler with a little hint of the crumb cake. I mentioned either the November kit or the October kit that I couldn't find my classic matte dots. I have found them. Notice the whites are all used up. So I just have the cream gray and black. So I used the gray here. I thought that was a nice contrast since my central focal point is all white and black. I think this is an awesome masculine card. Very, very nice for masculine. It is not finished. And look, I used this. This was a leftover actually from, boy, a year ago. So I always keep my cutout edges to use for mats. So I cannot stress enough that that is a really good use of material. Number three. Now this one, it's too late, but I would love to have, have um, stamped. Cherry Cobbler was the, the color. I have not opened it, you'll see. I have actually stopped opening them at this point. I just use my own cherry cobbler, and it's too bad I did not stamp the red on the ho-ho-ho. So this uses all three colors. It uses elements from both kits, and I think that it is very cute. And this is my ruched uh, sample that I made. I showed you guys how to make that. It is in the video for the October kit, which is the ho-ho-ho kit with the card bases. And oh, I was naughty here. I was hoping I was gonna flip it over and show you guys that I had cut something out of this shaded spruce cardstock. So, and this is a stamp from the October kit using the greens as I showed you with the little bit of an iridescent coating. And for this one, I actually might come back. I'm gonna go back through. These are for mine to send. I have a very few grouping of people that I know would be okay with the Santa, sort of Santa theme. And so I will be dressing these up even further as well as this one's not even on a base yet. I will stamp the insides. I have a whole bunch of kind of generic Christmas stamps like trees, snowflakes, holly, and um, boughs that I will use. Oh, and some snow. So I will go through and decorate insides as well as envelopes before I mail these. And my goal is to get these mailed by this Friday. So here's a little bit of a different one. It uses the, um, I don't think that's Poppy Parade, but it kind of looks Poppy Parade-ish with real red cherry cobbler. I grabbed a real red uh, back. I won't show you the back of it because I was naughty twice. And I, I tied a quadruple, no, this is a triple. And, and it is the green that we got with one of the two kits. So here's the green. I've used it quite a bit. Um, if it's the green and it goes with these, then this is from the November kit. I really love these particular iridescent uh, sequins. They actually look like rhinestones. They actually tricked me. And again, like the other card you just saw, I will be going through and adding more rhinestones to these. Rhinestones, sequins, I'll probably do clusters instead of just singles like you see here to finish dressing it up. The other thing I might do to this one is I have some gilding wax which we've used uh, some acrylic paint. I think there was one called champagne that was a carried over but I will probably pick either silver or gold and I will do some hand rubbing of this gilding wax around the edges when I add the sequins and put it on a base. I'm not going to do photography for these. I will probably just do the walkthrough uh, in the interest of time because I have to get these all to the next phase of life and actually get them addressed and ready to send out. And I'm going to be sending out probably over 60 now. 
All right, so this one was a good, another subtle Santa one. I have a few people that will be totally okay with this. And I liked the silver. I had started this as a mock-up for the October paper pumpkin. So all I had to do was add on these pieces that are from the November kit. So this is a really good combo mixing of the two with the various pieces as well as some add-on trim that I had and the iridescent pearls. Again, I see four pearls on here. I would like more. I will probably add some more colored gemstones of some variety going through. I will clean up my desk. I will lay out all of my uh, variety of embellishing and I will go through and just add on a whole bunch of stuff for these. And I'm, like I said, I may or may not get photography done. I will not have a showcase though for this video. If I do some sort of a showcase, it'll probably be maybe like a part three that all it is is a, as a showcase only with no talking or anything. The next one I really like. This was me working with the crumb cake. I told you there's all these crumb cake elements. To me, I look at this, I think it's a, it's a, like a sunflower. It does not look snowflake or wintry to me, but I think that this does a nice job of taking the crumb cake and winterizing these two elements. This piece is actually from the envelope itself. So this is from the braided silver seasonal trim and I unraveled all of it. I've done it on a couple of these particular crumb cake with the stripes. And then I ran the tag through the, the snow or wintry 3D snowflake embossing folder. So I think this one looks good. Um, looking at this, I see four. I probably will go ahead and add a fifth. Uh, I will t show you what this is. I really like it. The only color that works for me for the holidays is this particular color uh, because you'll see these glossy dots are very bright and none of the other colors are Christmassy. So I will be using these and probably will add at least one more and maybe add some iridescent pearls um, interchanging with them when I do my final pass through. And this one is turned into a card. So this we're now getting to the pile of where I actually made them into cards. All right, so this one I also brought out. I bought some new replacement embossing paste. It is a little bit of a yellowy white, you can see, but it dries nice and stiff. It's a very lovely uh, paste if you haven't played with it. And I know recently there have been videos, I think, from our CEO, uh, coloring the embossing paste. And so that is a trick that I have done many years in the past. You know, everything comes back in a cycle. So this one is pretty complete. Uh, it's a, another excellent masculine card. This is done in um, early espresso. The, the circle and these dots are black. And then I did an early espresso uh, base liner and then did two treatments with the trim and I think that this is a another wonderful masculine card another thing that I did with the um, snow snowflake wintry 3d embossing folder is I ran it through twice because it's only a half size embossing folder so I had to run it through each side and I went ahead and used craft white so it actually in person I can't tell if if it shows through on the camera, but it is um, white-ish and has kind of a whitewashed look to it. And it is also a complete card. So here now is a simpler one. I, I just did it like it was because it pretty much is a complete story. It is a, very close to what I demoed. Uh, the only thing I want to do probably is I see I didn't um, put a bow so I will probably do some sort of a bow or a knot or some sort of fluffy something at the bottom. But it, it'll have to be over on this side because I don't want it to get in the way of the Happy Christmas. And so uh, this one needs a little bit more work. I have to kind of figure out the bottom and what I want to do. And then it already has five pearls. I might add sequins. There are some whitish sequins here. I can grab hold of them. 
so these might be a nice uh, a soft addition and make it a couple of groupings and then I will call this one done this one is not done it is and it does use this red on the bottom and the red on the top are both from the kits so they are white core which means you can easily sand off the elements which is why I, I did a few different embossings and then rubbed off you'll see a few of those so that one though not as fancy as I normally do I still will use that one here is one that I really love again I used so this is pool party and it roughed up so I've in person you can see the the white coming through on the snowflakes then I took the embossing paste and I just took a pellet knife and smeared it around then I roughed up the edges and added this fluffy, thick, kind of wintry sweater looking piece of trim as well as the organdy ribbon just with a knot. And then all layers of this have been roughed up and this might be my favorite one. I don't know that I would do any more. I really love the, the glossy dots the way they are, uh, but maybe I could go ahead and add either the iridescent pearls or I could decide silver or gold. Um, here's like a little gold. So I could definitely add color silver metallic to this if I wanted to, to really just put it over the top, which is what my goal is on the cards that I make. And it is not turned into a card. And this is one of the white, white bases that I was able to use so again trying to utilize as many of the pieces as I can from the kits and I still have tons of pieces left here is the last one that is completed the the next couple that I have to show you are just like sitting um, in pieces they're just kind of still in the conceptual stage but I officially haven't showed you enough now to be able to move on to the finishing stage the I have um, like 60 cards, I believe, all together now, ready to go. Maybe even 65, because I forgot that I had the set of note cards. If you watch The Winter is Coming Wednesday, I did two different segments of craft note cards that we received as projects to work on. One was a set, it comes as a set of 20, and I did 10 as Thanksgiving with materials they provided, and then they provided enough materials to do 10 Christmas those are all finished and ready to go as well so that I can use those. So I might even have 70. I'm, I'm not sure. But I've just made a lot of cards over the last few days. This one I went really thick with the trims. I only, I had colored the linen trim with a Bermuda Bay blend and wanted to dress it up so I used some iridescent trim that I got it's the crochet trim, crochet thread from Hobby Lobby I've already added three of the glossy dots as well as the iridescent pearls I did also take my craft spot and I did a direct treatment on this one where I just rubbed it across and I, I took the embossing folder and ran it like three quarters of the way through and left the bottom of this smooth and then positioned this small piece which is the way it came that size and I just positioned it a little bit offset and I had already shown this particular piece with the Santa Claus is coming to town in the October alternatives video so this was a really nice one, easy to do, and it looks cute. Someone will love it. And it is not on a base yet, but it does use the card bases back uh, white so that the whites match. Now, that's all I've got for my cards. And then the last few, this one I will be able to, I've got it mocked up. It started out as one of my simple stamping projects and I think I can dress it up. I need to get a cherry cobbler cardstock piece to be the base. I'm going to stamp the ho 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 outline. I think that will really tie it together and then I will add some sort of um, embellishments and I may 
I, I've got this thread that I already had on here because I was going to do something different with this that I didn't use. So I have to put something here and it will probably be that silver trim, the really chunky. Oh, here it is. So I have one chunk of this left. I will probably unravel it and put it through here like I've done with the other ones. And because this is candy canes, I was tempted to have the striped tag be snowflakes, but I am not going to run it through with the snowflakes because I think that we've got stripes and we've got candy cane stripes. So I'm going to leave it like it is and put it on a cherry cobbler base. And then I have yet another one and I did finish this one. Um, it, it does not have any, uh, bling on it yet. And I wanted to just remind everybody that these ho ho hoes can be used. There's the Mary, but it's Mary upside down, Mary right side up, Mary, but the ho ho hoes make a great stencil. And all I did was take a sponge, a finger dauber and finger daubed. I kind of padded the pattern so that it, it's kind of an uneven splotchy look. And then I masked off over on the side so that it, because the Mary is kind of close and I didn't want to accidentally have a shadow or halo if I overshot my sponge. And this one may go to my stash. So I always make these cards to go in my stash because people who subscribe to Paper Pumpkin with me receive at every 6th and 12th month. Let's see, let's get this straight. Yeah, 6th and 12th month of consistent subscribing to Paper Pumpkin, I send them a set of cards and some little samples and things um, as a thank you. So this one will go in my stash and that officially concludes the video. So you can stop and, and take a look at the cards as you go through. And um, like I said, because of timing, I will not do a showcase at the end. And I will possibly, when I get these completely ready to go, I will snap pictures of them and put them in just a quick showcase that will be, you know, less than a minute long. So hopefully that will be happening in, happening in the next couple of days. But I know people have been asking when part two was going to come out where I merge both of the kits together. So I wanted to get that to you guys as soon as possible because I know many of you are going to be using these materials to make your own cards. So any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them here on the video or over on my blog. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching. 